Hi everybody, Jordan from Foundry. Just wanted to give you a little bit of a tips and tricks about uh, graph state variables, or GSVs to those that know Katana. So they're really at the heart of what makes Katana really empower artists and get things going. So you can see here, it's really simple. Uh, you can set things up in a way that an artist can have access to multiple assets working on them in uh, live rendering workflows all at the same time. And this kind of thing is really easy to do. If you're working on something complex like a car configurator render uh, system, you can really um, just set it up so that all the possible variations, all the possible lighting scenarios, all the possible camera angles, they're all at your fingertips. And everything you do in a scene can affect every single one of these variations or using the graph state variables and the variable switch, which I'm gonna show you, you can uh, get into some fine-tuned, uh, scenario-driven uh, revisions. So really cool, and in the end, really artist-friendly. All right, so here we are in Katana 3.1 with a wee bit of a setup to give you guys a look at graph state variables and how they get used and why people can put them together in so many cool ways. So. First off, there are really sort of three main uh, components to any workflow based around graph state variables. So first off, there's the variables themselves. So where do you find them? You come to production settings, or project settings, pardon me, and then you come down here and you can see where your variables are all listed. So here we have uh, graph state variables. You can delete all of them if you've gone and made mistakes. You can add uh, a new variable and let's just add this in proactively. So you click add, then you got the little wrench icon here. You can say rename, and I'm gonna say that we're gonna call this options. And we're going to set it up so that it has option one. Let's keep it consistent with everything else. Option one, option two, there we go. And we can see that we have both option one and option two. Uh, in our other ones that we've set up. So I've got lights, materials, camera, and scene, and we'll quickly look through the node graph in a bit to show you what. But each of these has a, you know, a number of options. So this isn't just like a binary pair. Uh, you can basically put plug in as many as you possibly need in to match a scenario. The general philosophy behind a graph state variable is this idea that you need to have information flowing through a node graph, and you wanna change uh, the state or the options you want to branch. You want to just basically be able to say, you know what, I want to do this most of the time. I want to do the exact same thing, but when I get to this one point in the node graph, I want options. I want to be able to say, go left, go right, make it brighter, make it darker, make it red, make it green. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can stick them together. All right, so this is where the graph state variables are. You can use uh, Python uh, with this, so it doesn't have to be a user-driven, clickety-click, uh, mouse spectacular. You can also see that we have them up here at the top. So this is where in an artist workflow, people will deal with uh, the various graph state variables after they've been set up. But let's now look at how they're used. So I'm gonna take this node graph, bring it up full screen. And just while we're here, backdrops, uh, you know, the J key, the two work together beautifully if you want to be able to pop around your scene. If you ever wondered where the inspiration for this workflow in Nuke came from, you're looking at it, it came from Katana. Right, so uh, we'll fix my spelling mistake because you know we're all human, we all have spelling issues. But there we go. So what I've done here is I've created a number of cameras that are fed into a variable switch. The variable switch right there is another big part of a graph state variable workflow. So whether you're doing multiple variations, whether you're doing multiple shots, uh, however you want to plug these together, remember it's about a node graph that does a whole bunch of things that needs to do it again and again and again. And sometimes, like I said, you need to make it kind of just do something a little bit out of the ordinary uh, from this linear repeated set of steps, which is what the node graph is. So. I've got four possible cameras I have fed to a switch. That switch listens to this variable up here, camera. And so when I come and look at that 
uh, switch set up, I can say that I've got it set up to listen to the camera, and it's just going to listen to these different inputs. These different inputs are what we've already set up here. So now it's all plumbed up, ready to go. So wherever, and it doesn't just have to be this one spot, wherever that criteria of changing the camera comes up, I can drop in this variable switch. I can copy and paste it. I can Pythonically create a new one. You can have it in your template to go. All of that just really, you know, is set up to go and it will make allow you to change anything based on the camera. So get this, if you want to change the lighting based on the camera angle, you can, again, use a camera based variable switch and basically feed it different lighting options. Lighting option one, two, three, four. So that's one way to use it. Let's take a look at our scene. So, oh, went the wrong one. So scene objects, right. So the scene objects here are, we have a gnome, we have the katana mascot, the pony, and we've got a plane. Now I'm taking these three objects and mixing and matching them together into three different scenes. So let's just go back to scene graph, expand everything for a second, and we will just pop down to here, set our view and edit flags there. We now can say that we can look at the whole scene and what have we got? Well, in our handy dandy Hydra viewport, because the scene is set to gnome, it is taking the gnome scene, right? Then we've got a pony scene and we've got everything together. And what's happening here is I'm taking the gnome, matching up with the poly plane, grouping it together as one, so on and so forth. So you're not exactly going to do set up your scenes like this, you know, but if you still had a layout that needs to match with a character animation and your character animations are all different based on the shots, but the set is the same, same kind of things can take place, right? So you could uh, mix together uh, all your different shot setups. So, you know, even though this is very basic, so you guys can easily recreate it, download Katana 3.1 from our website, you know, drop in a gnome, drop in a pony and drop in a plane and you can start building this too. So the graph state variables are, can be set up to manage uh, shot setups or your scenes. So here we have the pony. Here we have the two of them together. Bad kind of, you know, fly, you know, type uh, teleportation accident happening there. We're going to fix that later. Uh, but if we switch our shot camera to look through here, we can then see what the shot cameras have done. So we have shot camera one, shot camera two, shot camera three, so on and so forth. So that works out. What else do we have? Well, then we have materials. So, you know, if you've got assets, uh, and right now I'm just using one material to go through here. So let's kick off a live render. Uh, if you're new to Katana, if you shift click on the root level uh, on moderate size scenes, then you're all good to go. So let's change our camera to camera two. And then we have with us a plastic, a metal, glass, which doesn't look as good being on top of black, and then a cardboard. So all of these options can be fed through. This could be, if you think about this, it could actually be a whole library of shaders. So you could have a whole series of look files, look out for a video uh, about look files. You could have a live group that brings in a whole library of materials that are being programmatically applied by using the rule system inside of Katana. Again, all these little building blocks, uh, you know, we're just talking about graph state variables today, but there's a lot of building blocks that you just start putting together and you get awesome power out of it. All right, so we've got uh, materials and then let's look at the final thing that we've uh, thrown through here and we've got three different lighting scenarios so if we come up here we can say that you know what we actually don't want to work with the spotlight let's go look at the area light and that looks better from I think camera one because we're doing a little bit more side lighting and then we also have our sky these 
right? So however you need to put your scenes together, however you want to manage them once you have them together, you can mix and match. You don't have to basically be stuck in one uh, way of working all together. Now, I happen to like uh, the spotlight look, so let's go back to that. And let's go back to camera two. And let's say that we want to get these guys uh, in a better situation. So we have put together our little scene with a simple little note graph like this. So cameras, objects, materials, lights, we switch together the setup. Keep in mind that a normal pipeline, an artist isn't gonna plug all this together by hand. You're gonna spend some time and you're gonna figure out what is my template, just like you don't start from scratch with every single artist with a nuke file. You figure out a template, you use it. What you then do is you introduce logical points for people to make their changes and make their additions to the collective work that's going on inside of Yarn. So what else do we have going on? We have the scenes that are being switched. We're bringing together parts of these groups. I've got a little bit of work going on inside here. That is just basically making sure that there's a gray shader, assigning it to a scene, setting things up, making sure my atmosphere for three light is all set up. And then we merge together some more and we assign all these materials so that they are going through. All right, so let's rescue the pony and the gnome from each other uh, and make sure that they are not stuck in this weird teleportation accident uh, type setup. So what we'll do is that we'll just drop in a transform 3D and I'm gonna set up four of these real quickly because what I want to do, and I'm just going to, if you ever want to, snapping, if it's not working for you, uh, just in the screen space I'm working with here, I wanna make sure these things line up a little bit easier for us to look at. So, taking the scene together like so, I can connect this up, and you can see there's already this idea of branching happening, All right? So, now what I can do is say that uh, we have a variable switch and I can say that what I want to do is put uh, this together like so and this one together like so. We'll unplug that one so it's there for a second. Delete that port. There we go. So now we're good to go and everything's all set up. So what I can do on this variable switch is I'm going to say that we want it to listen to this options that we had set up. And if you remember, we have option underscore zero one, option underscore zero two. Now uh, what will happen is that based on the input, so this will be option one, this will be option two, the, uh, the gnome and the horse will go different directions. So what I can do is say that, you know what, I'm gonna add the gnome or the pony to the top thing in each case. I am going to add the gnome to the bottom one in each case. And I am going to say, let's make it interactive. And this will just allow us to have a 3D handle show up underneath the objects. Here we are. We've got our scene set up uh, with our variable switches. I'm working on option one. So we've got this guy here. So I can then say, you know what? I'm gonna take my pony. I'm gonna move him to the left. I'm going to grab this guy and I'm gonna move him to the right. Now, a little pro tip, it will have targeted uh, the transforms back to transform 3D nodes that were active for that object uh, in the node graph at that time. And that's the cool part of being able to make it interactive is that you can come in and make these edits. All right, so my art director says he's not quite sure uh, whether or not he's going to be happy with them this way with the horse on uh, the left, so let's give him another option. And we'll put the gnome here and the pony here.
spirit. Right. And for fun, let's just get it. Right. Leaning Tower of Gnome. So we now have option one and option two. But uh, what happens when we actually uh, want this to only apply to when uh, both gnomes are in the scene or both objects are in the scene. So if I actually come to this part here where I've got said everything and go back to gnome, he's not in the center and that doesn't work for me. So what can I do? Well, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping here. And what I can do is I can create another variable switch And I can plug it in here. And we'll say that we want this one to come first. So we're going to take my gnomes before or scene before any kind of change. And this one here. And then I am going to put that one there. OK, so. This is options switch. And now I am going to say that this is actually my scene switch. Okay, so what I can do is we're going to say so. Here we go. So you can see it's picked up one. So we've used that name elsewhere. If I wanted to cheat, I probably could have gone and copy and pasted this, but let's just do it from scratch. So let's just do scene. And then what I'm going to do on the second one is we'll try this first. So I've got everything set up uh, as the, uh, the gnome. And if we refresh our live render, we didn't pick up that. Last little update. We can see that we've got our gnome coming in center. We've got our pony coming in center. And then with everything, I now have them back where I wanted. And I've got option one and option two. And if I go back to pony, Boom. So there you go, guys. That's uh, some of the beautiful artist focused complexity management that you can get into. Um, how you can really just set it up, how you can manage multiple shots, multiple variations, car configurators, you name it. Whatever your complex job is, that really uh, in any other tool becomes a nightmare to manage all that complexity uh, we're trying to make it simple and this has been in katana for a while and so